it's a very powerful conversation, distinguishing power and force. Um, and I'm going to talk about power a little bit differently than how you mentioned it. And I don't, I, I want you to keep everything beautiful that you experienced with that. And here's an, uh, an additional uh, facet to how you could look at power and how it relates to force. So power in this conversation, in this very specific conversation, power is, um, power is measured by what you accomplish minus how much time and energy it takes to accomplish it. Right. So if I'm very, 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 very powerful, I might be able to, you know, I don't know, train myself to run a marathon in a week. Right. If I'm less powerful, maybe it takes a month. And if I'm even less powerful, maybe it takes six months. Marathon may not be the best example. Right. But whatever you're trying to accomplish takes time and energy. Right. So power is the ability to accomplish with less time and energy. So more power you have, the less expensive things are for you to accomplish. The, the less powerful, you, uh, the less, the more powerful you are, the less expensive it is for you. So force is something a little bit different. Force is your ability to to make something happen, to make people agree with you, to make people do what you say, to make situations uh, contort and conform to your will and desire. So force is the low side of power. Power is the high side of force, right? So they're, they're similar, and force is force now. Power and force, usually when people talk about power, what they actually mean is force. I hate people who throw away, throw around their power. Powerful people don't throw around their weight. They don't need to. Powerful people are interested in, uh, you know, uh, supporting others. And the more powerful they are, the easier it is for them to do that. So I've been working on my power for uh, quite some time now related to um, being a resource for people to wake up and discover they have everything they need within them and to literally transform and be the author of their own lives from nothing, right? So I've been increasing my power in that for a long time, and I have a deep commitment to continue to increase my power, right? But I, but force is not part of my recipe with this work. I don't ever use, that I'm aware of, I don't ever use force. I don't try to talk people into something. I don't need to get, I don't need people to agree with me. I don't need people to say yes. Um, I don't need people to speak to me a particular way. Um, and so, um, so, uh, so yeah, so that's force and power. So power, really good. I highly recommend being at work on your ability, uh, you, you, being powerful, being powerful, being powerful at what, whatever's important to you whatever it is you'd like to accomplish, being powerful in relationships. Like I'm also powerful in relationships. I can be in a relationship and with very little energy or effort, uh, very little time, energy and effort, I can be in a relationship that really works. Um, I'm very powerful with regard to creating programs. If I get inspired about something, I can in just a few minutes really create a program that's really beautiful and transcendent. Right, but I wasn't born that way. I've been working on that to increase my power in those domains. Those domains are important to me. Um, it used to be I used force. Now I was very, I was clever and I was entertaining and I was charming, but make no mistake, I was applying force. I was getting people to do stuff. I was getting people to agree with me. I was making situations work for me and there was no power about it. I wasn't, I wasn't creating something that worked for everybody. And I wasn't coming from love and I wasn't coming from my power. I was coming from my weakness. Oh, that's very good. Power comes from, from your strength. Force comes from your weakness. I, like I feel really weak. So I must force this. I can't, I can't I'm not okay if, if you don't agree with me. So I'm going to, I'm going to bludgeon you with words and energy until you say, yes, I agree with you. <laughs> that comes from weakness. A, a strong person doesn't need anybody to be in a particular way. A weak person is often tripping on, you know, what do they think about me? What do they say about me? What, what you know, what's what's going to happen tomorrow? Don't worry about that. It's all just going to unfold just the way it is. It's all fine, right? But from fear, all that looks really important. From strength, it, it's 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 irrelevant. <clears throat> You're a powerful drummer, and I bet you used to be forceful because you were trying yeah. to pr prove something. Now you don't have anything to prove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be I'd show up at a gig and. I would always find reasons to, you know, work in my best stuff or most impressive stuff. Especially if I noticed another drummer walked in, I would start altering what I was doing, right, to impress somebody. But that's from weakness. Yeah, I hear that really loud and clear. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. It resonates a lot with me. Beautiful. 
beautiful, good, good. And it's, uh, it's powerful to distinguish power, right? Because from distinguishing power, you can be someone who actually accomplishes really big, beautiful things without a lot of time and effort, mm. time, money, and effort. I think when you started to um, explain that, it probably triggered something, uh, I would call it a flinch, a contraction, what have you, um, trigger. <laughs> Sure. Amy, when when you said that, because I have felt that not only have I oh shit, <laughs> I felt <laughs> that because I it was coming from me and I felt it. Damn it! <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, right. And I didn't want to. Um, I felt that um, type of force yeah. applied to me most of my life uh, and have. Right absolutely resisted it i have yeah. pushed back against that right. i even have a drawing in my book because and and have associated with this masculine doing right. Right. Uh, masculine doing right it's like i just want to sit and be peaceful yeah yeah <laughs> leave me alone and right. so when you said that boy that really was well, just for me. just to expand that out to make it a little more painful to make sure that everybody's feeling distinctly right so it, it's not a masculine thing i'm talking about forceful is no not i know i but, but well, i heard it as that yeah yeah you know but yeah yeah i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not pushing back on you but i want to just unfold it for everyone right because it's yeah it's thank not. you so uh my mother uh is a woman right and uh, extremely forceful. Now, she's like a world-class victim. She is, I've never seen anybody so good at being a victim. She can literally walk down the street, do a little twitch, and three people will come up and try to help her. Like, she's a, I've never seen anything like it. It's amazing. Like, world-class, I've never seen anything like it. And, but it's force. It's manipulation. It's not masculine force, but it's feminine force. Um, you know, accusing someone of something so they... <laughs> You're being mean. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Right. That's force. Right. To to undermine someone, to get them to do what you want. That's force. To manipulate someone, to get them to do what you want. That's force. To shame someone, to get them to agree with you. That's force. Now that feels like a little bit more toxic feminine force, and then the toxic masculine force is like size and intimidation and loudness, that kind of stuff. Well, but yeah, make no yeah, mistake, yeah. they're both force, and they're both awful. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> And I certainly am one to use that as, you know, like I, I totally see how it was coming back to me for right. me to see. Cause when I want something done, you better know I'm going to move into masculine and I'm going to make <laughs> sure you know what's going to be done and when it's going to be done and how it's going to be done. Right. right, right. <laughs> and I so, am going to, so I know that totally has come back for me. It's like, perfect, great. Perfect. Perfect. Great. Thanks. So, so, so I just want to share something about my marriage and then I'll give it to John. So uh, Donna, um, Donna is, um, Donna is, uh, has a lot of masculine energy for a woman. Right. And so um, um, actually, is that relevant? I'm not sure it's relevant. So uh, what I, what I want to talk about is um, she has learned over the last couple of years with me that if she'll, if she'll, if she'll be powerful with me, ask for what she wants, communicate clearly, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm really energized about being of service to her, right? If she will just be straight with me and ask me for something, if I could possibly do it and have everything else in my life work, I will absolutely will do that. Like I look very strongly towards the yes. I try to make a yes work, right? Uh, but in the past, uh, before we were closer together, before we've done this work together so much, uh, she would be forceful with me. She wouldn't say anything, wouldn't say anything, wouldn't say anything, and then like it would be this sort of explosion, right? Now, neither one of those really set us up for success because if you don't say anything, then I have no idea what's going on in there. And I, I know we're supposed to read minds. I understand that, but I'm just not very good at it, right? Uh, and then when she attacks me with it, I'm kind of a no because that's not the beast. I'm not going to feed that beast. I know where that road goes. When someone is bad with you and you say yes, I know where that road goes. I've been down it many times. I've gone very far. <laughs> I'm an expert. Uh, I've got credentials. I got a closet full of t-shirts. I got a, I got a, I got a PhD and a master's and whatever comes after that. Whatever. I, I'm well versed in that, and I'll literally, I'll literally let the house burn before I feed the beast anymore. <laughs> like I'll literally like, well, okay, I'm just not. 
I'm not going to respond that way. If you need to leave me, then you need to do that, right? I'm just not doing it. Have you been talking to my husband? No, (laughs) but I am inspired because something about how you spoke about your husband is actually what's pulling this out of me because I heard our relationship in it, right? Yeah. But now now she's really got, if she just gives me space and just sees me at my best and is direct and clear with me, uh, she gets a really great husband. You know, like I'm I'm, I'm, I'm motivated, I'm doting. I'm sensitive to her. I, I take great joy in being of service to her. I take pride in being being a, a great husband, just like I take pride in being a great at anything I apply myself to. Um, and all she's got to do is just be her. And just, when she wants something, just clear, just make clear requests and don't push or pull. Because I, I have so two things, right? First of all, I, I used to be a zoomer, right? I used to be the really clever, charming person that would manipulate to get what they want. So that's not a good way to approach me. <laughs> and secondly, I've been pushed around and, and, and bullied my entire life. So that's not uh, like I'm, I'm well, I'm well, well trained in how to do that. And so there's really, there's really the only way you can really work with me is just to be real, be yourself and just be clear, you know, and then, then I'm all about it. You know, so she's really, uh, she's really ingrained that over the last year. And she's like, and she takes great joy and, and being easy for me to be of service to. And so it's, it's really a beautiful thing. Uh, but that, but that's power, not force. So, so that's a little tale of power. Mm-hmm. See, she, she gets great results with me with almost no effort. I would like that. Yeah. Power. <laughs> power. Now, what your husband, what's ideal for your husband may not be, may be different than what's ideal for me, but I'm really clear. I like straight communication. I hate pillows. Don't, don't, don't do the backstory. Don't set it up where I feel bad if I say no. Give me, give me freedom to say no. And if I can possibly say yes, I will, you know, but try to manipulate me (laughs) or try to push me and I'll say no on principle. (laughs) <laughs> I find that in my relationship, when I try to be clear and direct about my feelings, yeah. and I'm very um, intentional with my words yeah. most of the time, yeah. um, that it is heard as criticism yeah. and that yeah. and that drops the wall. And, and once the wall's down, I'm kicking at it. Okay, I'm cool. Let me give you a different approach. Okay. Yeah, Instead of talking about your feelings, talk about the highest that you'd like to see. Like you see, stop. Well, so, so just as an experiment, right? Stop pointing to what's wrong and what doesn't work and point to what you see is possible. So your husband walks in from work, let's say, ignores you. You have your feelings hurt. Um, and they come back into the room an hour later and you're in a pissy mood. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sound good. Yep. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> I, I hear that one. <laughs> okay, good. 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 I, that was, that, 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 that was just a, a little intuitive hit for me. So, <laughs> okay, cool. So, uh, great. So what's possible, right, is you guys being able to complete the day, spending an evening together in love and harmony and actually appreciating each other, right? And supporting each other and how you'd like to have your evenings go. Maybe you'd like to pick an hour or two and work on your your master class in a really loving and supportive environment. Maybe he would like to be left alone and recuperate from work and watch a little TV and then maybe come and give you a little hug and say, hey, how, how's your thing going? Or whatever, right? But there there is this ideal scenario that you could really kind of start standing for and giving life to, you know, breathing life and love into it, learn how to articulate in such a way that's actually inviting. So disting- this distinction is a world is a, is a world in language that's useful. So it would be useful for him to be able to distinguish what you see as possible. You see that? Be useful for him. He could actually enjoy being home in the evening with his wife, right? So that's useful, right? And if you could create a way that's inviting, then you'd be distinguishing this whole future that you see possible. Right, a world in language. Well, there's the world. We come home, we have dinner, we both get to do our creative, beautiful stuff. We come together and appreciate each other, or whatever it is, right? Whatever it is that you see is beautiful, right? And then you distinguish it, 
you create it in language, but it's real, but it's real in language, and it looks useful. Like, wow, that'd be awesome. I, boy, that would be so much better than what I got right now. And it's inviting. You're creating it in such a way that, yeah, like, I would like to do that with you. Like, the way you articulate it, the way you stand for it, the way you talk about it, that feels really good. I, I would like to create that future with you. Notice how it's very different then. Here's how you made me feel when you da-da-da-da-da-da-da. It just feels very different. You see that? <laughs> Maybe a little. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, muy piquito different, right? So, uh, so uh, yeah, so I find that uh, what the, the show, I find the most difficult question. In, in my 25 years of coaching and leading, there's one question that I found is the most single difficult question for anybody to answer. Would you like to hear what that question is? Yes. The question is, what do you want? I literally have intelligent, trained, motivated people talk to me for freaking hours about what's wrong and what they don't want and what should be different. Okay, cool, cool, cool. One little question, if I may. Absolutely. What do you want? Now, I'll tell you what I don't want. That actually wasn't my question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it again. What do you want? I want them to stop being an asshole. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Let's see if we can up level that just a tad. <laughs> now, see, so you, what you want is actually something that's beautiful, Amy. Can you feel that? What yeah. you want is something that's really beautiful. But you are not connected. To, I want us to paint together at night instead of work on our things. Awesome. Create a world in language that's useful and inviting. Stop pointing to what doesn't work and start pointing to what is beautiful and possible and then stand for what's beautiful and possible and understand that it might take him a minute to change gears, to change the dance. Because you've been, you've, been, you've been shaming him about how he's made you feel for quite some time, I, 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 I speculate. About 28 years, maybe. Okay, cool. So it might take more than like one shot to pull that needle out of that group and put it in a new group. Can you feel that? Oh, yes. <laughs> so, so I recommend compassion. I recommend patience. I recommend love. And I recommend taking a moment, Amy, to really distinguish what you want more than I just want us to paint. Keep going. To take a minute. It's worth it. You're worth it. He's worth it. The marriage is worth it. And your evenings are worth it. Take a moment and really dilate what you want in a way that actually inspires you, brings life from the inside out where you are. And as you share that life from the inside where, where you are, there's a really good chance he will feel life on the inside where he's at and he'll be interested in what you're saying. There's a chance. That would be nice. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's for sure a swing other than pointing to what doesn't work. <laughs> okay, I heard you. <laughs> awesome. All right, great. Amy, you're delightful. Thanks Thank for your generous you. I so appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wait, 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 I, I really appreciate so you too, Kirk. I feel oh, I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for being so generous with me. I so appreciate that. And with that, let's unmute ourselves. Get, give John a little love and say, Johnny, 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 come and bring it, baby. Johnny, 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 come Johnny, and bring it, Johnny, baby. Johnny. <laughs> Oh, all right great. welcome everybody come and bring it baby all right here we go then great job great shares awesome let's get up for kirk let's get a big round of applause to kirk for his great wisdom Woo! that he brought kirky 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 thank you kirky Sarah. kirky kirky everybody say kirky 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 <laughs> turkey 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 <laughs> All right, so welcome everyone to the spiritual capitalist mastermind where we are doing well while doing good who here would uh like to do really good things in the world raise your hand awesome thank you who here would be okay making a whole lot of money say i awesome thank you who'd be I okay like. making a whole lot of money doing really good things in the world say i want that i want that all right awesome thank you that's what that's what the spiritual capitalist mastermind is all about again we're not here together because we share a common past which some of us do i share a common past with ariel i see he's here you know i've, I've known him for quite some time now but that's not why he's here and why I'm here and we're here together at the same time. It's because we share a common future and in the same direction. We're uh, creators unveiling the gift that we are to this world to share with this world, do well while doing good. That's the future that we share. And that's why, you know, that's why he's here. That's why I'm here. That's why Kirk's here. That's why you're here. So uh, thank you all for being here. Um, Amy, I feel you like you're, it's, you know, I, 
at first I was going to say, I feel like your, your power is growing and it's coming from the inside out. So power comes from the inside out. Forced is like, you're, you know, you're trying to do take from the outside and you're trying to, you're, you're like creating like mechanisms and machines and things like to try to make things happen. But power is just something that is, it's like, you know, it's like a, a waterfall, you know, you don't create any sort of artificial mechanisms for it to work. It's just, it's just powerful just because it's flowing. So it's not like you're, I don't feel, at, at first I was thinking your power is growing, but as like, no, it's actually just being unveiled. It's being, you're taking your foot off the brake because you're not trying to figure out how to get the power anymore. You're just taking your foot off the brake and just being yourself and it's starting to be exposed. And, and it's because you're become, becoming authentic. Now, I remember at Awaken Life Live, I say that uh, power comes from authenticity and authenticity comes from vulnerability. So where does your power actually come from? Vulnerability. So um, perfect example of, of power, um, because again, if you're being fake, if you're, you know, if you're not being you, there's, you can't be powerful. That's, that's force. You're having, you're ma manipulating your, you know, but just being yourself is powerful. So, uh, but you have to be vulnerable because you're opening up your, you know, you're taking your, all your, your shields off. You don't have any shield. Like, Hey, here I am standing naked right here. Right. So somebody could, come in but the thing is they can't hurt you because you're standing as power so you, it's like love love can't perfect love cast out all fear love can't be affected by by fear love can't be affected by darkness so it's powerful because it's what is and you know lies and illusions and you know all this other stuff fear you know it's it's not real so it has no effect on the power that you're standing as so as you start to recognize and remember who you are and you just share that vulnerably and so that's what you're being great at is becoming more vulnerable and just sharing, um, not, not share. You're not sharing to get anything. You're just sharing to give something and your shares have been giving something to, to the group, to the entire group. It's opened up. I mean, it opened up an entire conversation. It's, it's, it's a gift. So the vulnerability, everybody say my vulnerability is my power. My vulnerability is my, my vulnerability power. is my power. Awesome. Thank you. So um, there's a there's a story and it's a true story. I don't remember what the guy's name was and 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 who it was uh, who it was in the story, but there's this guy who was preparing to assassinate. A, I think it was a president for like two years. He'd been preparing for this one moment, and the moment comes, and you know there was a parade going on, and he pulls out his gun, uh, and he'd been dreaming about this moment for two years, preparing for this, this moment right here. And was nothing going to stop him. He pulls out his gun and he's about to uh, shoot this president. And as he does it, he accidentally bumps his elbow into this, this little old lady, it's a little grandma. And as he does that, he hits her. And then she turns to him and says, Oh, are you okay, Sonny? Are you okay? And she just with this pure, just pure open heart, you know, there's no force in there. There's no she just really cares. She really cares about the guy. Hey, are you, are you okay? You okay, son? And all of a sudden the guy, you know, put, he puts his gun back into his, but yeah, she didn't see it. She didn't see the gun and he just puts it back away. Now imagine if there was like 10 dudes would have jumped on him. Would that have stopped him? No, he would have, he would have somehow, he would have pulled, he would have fought against them and made this thing happen. But that one little lady who was just pure and vulnerable and just cared, stopped this man from killing someone that you know several dudes wouldn't have been able to do that's powerful and it's not because she tried to force something or take something it's just she was just being herself so power doesn't look like what we think uh what we've because everything that we share at earth waking is counter programming it's the exact opposite of what the 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 illusion the maya has taught us um and it's just because we've this whole world has taught us to be consumers. It's taught us like all the things that we have to get and have to become. But what we are earth waking is just like, no, wake up to who you are and stop trying to get anything because you actually are something. So great job, uh, Amy, opening that up. Um, also, uh, you were looking for people who created master classes like using my template. I know for certain that. Uh, Vashon has, and uh, Chris has, and Jay has. Jay was on here earlier, but I know all three of them have created masterclasses off of like my exact template 
and it's like they're almost exact but they've they've changed a few things around and you know and nailed it so uh, you can reach out to them see if they they i think they've all got recordings of of their presentation or they'll probably have another one coming up soon and you could watch one of theirs so uh vishan chris and jay i know for certain have okay. done master classes. i watched I watched Fashan's and Chris's, but I hadn't gotten this far in the spiritual gap class to know what I should have been watching for and what I was kind of trying okay, to figure cool. out. So okay, yeah. I, I'll reach out to them all again. Yeah, just find out when they're doing it, doing it next. And yeah, you know, or they might have a recording, but okay. you, you know. cool. Uh, so I, I want to go back to this. There's a conversation we we're having earlier about like acknowledgements. Now, you know, I acknowledge the I acknowledge the shit right on out of myself all the time, right? I, I like, you know, I, I acknowledge me more than any person on this planet acknowledged me. And that's, that's really healthy. That's a good thing. Because like what Ariel was pointing to earlier, uh, make sure you're not getting drunk on other people's acknowledgements. Because if you, if you need their acknowledgement so you can feel good, well, then when they take it and turn it around and actually say, well, hey, you suck, then all of a sudden you're taking it all personal. And it's like, you're like on this roller coaster ride that their words decide where you go and you don't hear, you don't have any control over how you feel. They've got all the power. So um, it's important to really, to get that is not, not you, not using their acknowledgements. Don't get drunk on their acknowledgements, but don't reject their not acknowledgements either. Don't just like, Oh no, no, no. Because, um, and you'll, you'll know the difference. Like as you really start to look, where did my, was it, was it coming from, awareness and consciousness you know when i when i looked at their acknowledgement you can just receive it fully but you don't it you don't it's not like it's it's not doing anything for you really because you've already like nobody can do anything for me because it's all it, like i feel i've got the faith inside of me and there's no one can take it from me no no one can affect my faith period there's not a single person on this planet that can affect my faith if there is anybody who possibly you know you know has any sort of like shot at affecting it it'd be it'd be my wife mel because she's just so close to me and like she's like you know um someone that's just there right next to me uh but uh that would be the only one that could possibly even remotely affect my faith because you know we're yeah uh we're a team you know we're holding hands you know we're, we've made covenants with god heading in the direction uh towards love so um, yet I'm still a whole and complete sovereign being. And um, it's just because uh, it's complete trust. In, in, but so she wouldn't do that. You know, she wouldn't use her anything to affect my faith, to, to, to negatively impact my faith. So, and that's why she's the one that could, uh, because I trust her so much in that, you know, that's the reason that she would, could be the one that could, but so don't get drunk on the acknowledgements. Don't just immediately negate them and just block them out. You know, just let them come through. But you can do the same thing when people are like tearing you down. They can't actually tear you down. There's not a single person on this planet that can tear you down. So just let it pass through. Just let it come through. Don't put up a wall because now you're not being vulnerable. If you put up a wall to, if you put up a wall to deflect the, the, you know, the negative things somebody's saying about you, you don't need to deflect anything negative somebody's saying about. It. Just let, just let it pass right on through. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't do anything to you. It only does something to you is if you take it and then use it to beat yourself up with. That's the only thing. Because it doesn't matter if somebody your whole life calls you stupid. It means absolutely nothing. Your, your dad can call you stupid for your entire life, and it means nothing. The only time it means anything is when you do it. So you, there, that, that's like, you know, your mind is your garden. So you got all these seeds you can choose from. So the one could be, I am stupid, right? And so, you know, your dad or your mom could be sharing that with you your whole life, but they can't sow a seed in your garden, in your mind. Only you can do that. You pick the seeds. You're like, oh, okay, I am stupid. The moment you say it, then it affects you, but it has zero effect on you until you say it. So no one's words, no one's act, nothing anybody says or does can affect you, whether, even if it's to you and about you. Unless you say, okay, cool, I'm going to take that. And, you know, I, I, I believe your words. Um, more than what I believe about myself. And so, you know, there you go. So just let it all pass through. Don't put the walls up. Um, and so, uh, because what we see, what we we're talking about earlier was insecurity is really what it is. And it's, it's called false humility. So pride and insecurity are the exact same thing. 
They're two sides of the same coin, pride and insecurity. So if you're really insecure, you're actually really prideful. If you're really prideful, you're actually really insecure. The only, they're, 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 they're just the other side of it. It's the thing that you're hiding. So if you're really prideful, it's just because you're hiding that you're actually really insecure. If you're really insecure, it's actually because you're hiding that you're really prideful. So uh, false humility comes from insecurity and it's prideful. I, I Googled earlier, just looking up false humility. And this is the, I said false humility uh, meaning. And here's what it came up. Humble people fully appreciate their own gifts and talents, but don't esteem themselves above others. So that's, that's important. You've, so if you're a humble person, then you fully appreciate your own gifts and talents. Absolutely fully. Like Jesus was the most humble plant person that's at, you know, one of the most humble people that will have ever have ever existed on this planet. And he says, I'm God. Right? Now that to uh, somebody who doesn't, who, who's still in this competition and trying to become good enough, that looks to them like, oh, that's ego, right? That's pride. No, it's just being honest. It's like a lion isn't running around like, I'm a lion, I'm the king of the jungle. Like, no, the lion just is. So it, it's, it's not, but it's not going to pretend like it's a mouse. A lion, you're never going to see a lion pretending like it's a mouse. That's just ridiculous. But you'll see people doing, people doing that. You'll, you'll all see, you know, you guys are lions pretending like mice. It's, it's, artif it's, it's, it's artificial. It's like, it's not natural. It's not real. So like Noel is a lion. And I call her a lion. She's like, no, I'm just a little field mouse. You ain't no damn field mouse. Why are you saying that shit? So uh, back to the meaning of false humility. Humble people fully appreciate their own gifts and talents. Everybody say, I fully appreciate my own gifts and talents. But I don't esteem myself above others. So everyone has great gifts and talents. They're all like everyone's gifts and talents. They're, you know, they, they have, they, they, they're, they're equal. They're completely different, but they're all equal. We're, we're all have equal gifts. It's not the same. Like, you know, if you judge a turtle on his ability to fly, he's always a failure. So it's, they're completely different talents. But if you, you know, the turtle spends its whole life trying to, trying to, you know, I'm not enough unless I fly then it's never, the turtle's just missing out on who he is. So the turtle's got a gift. It looks completely different than the eagle or the hare. And you can be like, well, the hare's better because it's faster. The eagle's better because it can fly high and, and see further. But no, they're, it's just, they're just different. So um, a humble person fully appreciates their own gifts and talents. They don't compare themselves to other people. They don't like, they, they they don't look at them so like, hey, I'm better than everybody else because my gifts are better, right? I'm, I'm the most gifted and the most talented. Uh, now you've left humility. You're not in humility anymore because you're comparing yourself. So how do you know if, you're, if, you're, if you've left humility? If you're comparing yourself, with, which means either you think you're better than someone else or you think someone else is better than you. Both of those are facades. Both of those are illusions. So it's all equal. We're all, we all, are, all of our souls are equal. Um, now we all, you know, have different value in the marketplace based upon how we've uh, developed our, our, our ability to um, share those gifts with the marketplace, but, but that doesn't change our value, our soul's value, who we are. Um, so let me go back to the meaning one more time. I didn't finish it yet. So false humility, uh, humble people fully appreciate their own gifts and talents, but they don't esteem themselves above others. False humility, on the other hand, is pridefulness in disguise. We practice false humility when we intentionally devalue ourselves or our contributions in an attempt to appear humble. And so that's what most people are doing when they're, because they're, they're trying to do it. It's actually, it's force, you know, you're actually being forceful. When, and like we, like Karen was talking about earlier, when someone, uh, she, she's sharing with someone, acknowledging, and then they block it, well, it, all of a sudden, Karen's like, wow, that didn't really feel good that you blocked my thing. Like, how do you not see that? Because they're being forceful. But it's the same thing when they come back at her, like, hey, Karen, you are incredible. You're amazing. And then she's like, yeah, right? Because <laughs> you're not leaving your heart open to just, to just allow it to come through. So just receive it fully. So, you know, I receive it all fully. I receive 
It doesn't matter what anybody says. You say, John, you're an asshole. I'm like, ah, yeah, thank you. I received that. You know, I, I say, thank you. No, it doesn't matter what they say. <laughs> John, you're, you know, whatever they might say, like, you talk stupid. Okay, great. Oh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Like, I really, it's all the same. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I, it's the same for all of it. Just, I receive it fully. <laughs> and when it comes through me, it pops right back out as the only thing that it is, is love. It transmutes. If somebody, you, somebody meant it for evil, but I use it for good because that's what love is. That's all love is. It's just pure, you know, it's just good. So um, when you're no longer insecure, AKA prideful, same thing. So if you're insecure, you're prideful. So when you're no longer insecure, AKA prideful, you'll start taking massive action. What kind of action? Massive action. Massive. Well, it's going to appear massive to you. It's going to appear massive to the to the prideful, aka insecure, or the insecure, aka prideful identity that you think yourself to be. It's going to look massive, but to the person you're, you actually truly are, when you're not being in your false humility, when you're not being in your insecurity and your pridefulness, who, when you start to take your foot off the brake and let go of your smallness, because remember, the only thing you're in control of is your smallness. When you let go of control, let go of your smallness. You'll look back and the thing that you thought was massive action, like, <laughs> I, you know, I can do that in my sleep now. <laughs> massive action for me. I remember the, the very first time I did a, a, I ever did a speaking thing. You know, the first time I spoke, it was massive action just for me to do a little presentation, just to like speak. It was massive action for me to speak. Now it's like, well, you know, I just, that's just, it's no big deal now, but it was huge because I was so uh, prideful that it looked like insecurity, but it was really prideful because I was making it all about me. So you can only be small if you make it about you. You can only be forceful if you make it about you. You can only not, ex you can only not ex ex experience the full power of yourself if you're making it all about you. Got to get out of the way. It's not about you. Your, your life's not even about you. Nothing is about you. It's just, just, it's about love. It just let go. Just let love. It's not, it's just, Quit it. <laughs> like that you're suffering, you know, because you're making it all about you. You know, what are they going to think about me? I don't give a shit what they're going to think about you. Just be you. <laughs> That's it. Just be you. It doesn't matter what they think about you. What are they going to, you know, what are they going to say about you? Me? I, I, I don't care what they say about me. The only thing I care about is, am I being me? And am I caring about them? Not what they think about me, not what they say about me, but am I actually caring about them? Because what they think about me and what they say about me is not them. They're in there. And do I actually care about them or do I only care about, you know, what am I going to get out of them? Which is, will they, will they say what I want them to say? Or are they going to say what I don't want them to say? And if they say what I don't want them to say, you know, I'm still just worried about what I'm going to get from them or out of them. It's not about that. It's just about being myself and just opening my heart up and just pouring it out, pouring my entire heart and soul into everything that I do. If I stand up and speak, I, I, my first job is to get out of the way and just let my heart and soul just pour out because you get back what you put in. You want your heart, heart and soul, give it. Just give it away. Don't put the walls up and withhold it because if you withhold your heart and soul, it will be withheld from you because with the exact measure you use, it will be used back. You're the one withholding. The world is just your mirror. So your life will be withheld from you if you don't give it. Give your life, give your heart, give your soul. Just give it all. And your life will just blossom beyond your wildest dreams. I mean, I was just, um, somebody was talking to somebody, uh, another friend from, from back in the day, back when uh, I used to do, uh, uh, when I, when Ariel was watching me grow, like back in Pan the Panama City, Florida, Florida days. Now, Ariel watched me go through all kind of, <laughs> he see me, he see me like fire and put my whole heart and my whole soul in there. <laughs> and there's this whack and get the beat down and like, oh God, I don't know if I can get back up, but I just, I... <sighs> all right. Okay, here we go. And then when I come back out, my whole heart and soul was in it. I didn't, just because I fell down and because I got all dirty, you know, I still like, I didn't, I didn't stand up and, you know, and, and give, I didn't, I never half-assed it. I never gave half of, half of, half of my heart or half of my soul. I gave the whole thing every single time. 
And because I kept doing that and kept doing that, again, I was talking to uh, one of my friends that from, you know, back in the day, and um, he was asking me, hey, how's the family? How's everything going? I'm like, okay, like, it just gets better and better every freaking day. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I had no idea life could get this good. I'm like, really? Like, it just didn't even, I've, I've never even seen it on, I've never seen it on TV. I've never seen anybody even talk about the the experience that I have of life right now. It's literally beyond, it's, it's everything. It's like, it's everything that I've ever wanted. And I didn't even try to get it. I just gave it. I just kept giving. I just kept giving. And now I've got like, you know, what I, I think, what I didn't even, what I didn't even know that I would have, I did what I didn't even know that I would love so much. And it's just, you know just amazing it's beautiful so but it comes from pouring out my my heart and soul and taking massive action so it, again what looks to you like massive action right now your future self is gonna be like, like hey the bravo that was courage awesome job doing that and it was just a little like you 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 know what you like you like barely even dipped your toe in the water it wasn't even nothing you know so uh so once you're no longer insecure, aka prideful, aka making it all about you, you're going to take massive action. You're going to not just be sitting around getting ready to get ready. Did it, am I doing it right? Does it look right? Does it sound right? Does it feel right? Is it, is it good enough? You don't give a shit if it's good enough. <laughs> you just give everything that you have right now. Like you, don't, like you don't keep postponing. You don't, okay, 90 days. Give me 90 days to repair. You don't want 90 days to repair. I'm going to wait 90 days before I give my heart and soul. No, you don't wait 90 days to give your heart and soul. You do it now, and then you do it again, and then you do it again, and then you do it again. And you take the massive action. And when you take that step that you were afraid to take and didn't even know how to take, that's when providence moves. And, you know, again, you got, I, I love having Ariel here because he can vouch for everything that I say. He watched my, he watched me, he watched me taking my foot off the brake. He watched me, you know, the, 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 the little old mini me, Jonathan, that I thought I was, he watched him die. He literally watched him get ripped to shreds, little piece by piece. He watched him die. And, you know, everything that I'm sharing with you, he can vouch is that's, this is what it, this is what it was. I just kept, I just kept going and pouring my heart. And he watched Providence move for me many, many times. He saw it like the, it, it's a miracle, but it's Providence moving because as you take a step towards your destiny, your destiny takes a step towards you. And if, if what you do, if the step that you take doesn't surprise you, it doesn't shock you, it's doesn't, you know, it's, it's not going to shock your mirror either. It's not going to shock the, you know, the, the, it's not going to shock God if it doesn't shock you, you know? So it's gotta be something like, I don't think I can do this and then do it anyway. It, that's when, that's when like Amy, she's all of a sudden she starts, she actually started, she started taking action. And then all of a sudden, her, uh, what was her, your, um, set, your mother-in-law or something, whatever, is that what you said? Your, who was it? My sister-in-law that has your the man's program. Yeah, her sister-in-law all of a sudden has this piece of the puzzle. Well, it, it's a miracle. Yeah, it's Providence moving because, see, Amy means business. She ain't fooling around. You can feel it in her. You like, yeah, it, it, it it's, it, 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 there's a gestation period. It takes time, but it's already done. I see it in Amy. I see that it's done. I saw that it was done two, uh, two weeks ago. The, you know, the last week we did the, the breakthrough, I think was last week. And then the week before you know, we were talking about it and it was, it was done that day. And, you know, she's since then she's been dealing with, holy shit. Like, cause once you, you know, cause Thank that's God. what, <laughs> yeah. Cause that's what, that's when the army shows up like, Oh, because if you're just chilling, there's no, there's no need for an army. The, the army doesn't have to show up if you're just chilling. They're not doing anything. The army's going like they're going to bring the whole army when you're stepping into your power. Like uh oh, because the ego is terrified. Uh oh, they, they this person right here could end all the egos on the planet because they got that much light and they're starting to remember. And so this is our last shot. You know, we got to come. We got to bring throw everything we got. So. And again, it's happening. It's, it appears without though it's within. It's just your mirror. It's just your own fears and pro, your fears and insecurities coming at you. It's because uh, remember you face it within or you face it without by chance or by choice. Either way, you're going to face it. What are you facing? Your fears, your limiting beliefs, your insecurities. That's all you're facing. It's going to show up in form, in different forms. So it'll show up like an army. But you know what's really cool? When that army shows up, all you got to do is defeat Goliath. 
and that's the last that's that's the trick of the ego as well is the army shows up you got all the stuff you got to fight against right oh crap i'm doing my thing and then all the stuff comes at me and then it's trying to distract you so you go fight in all the battles you don't need to go fight all the battles you need to fight one battle goliath what is your goliath when you take down goliath and chop his head off with his own sword the whole army lays down and goliath is the it's that step that you don't want to take it's the it's the it's the doing everything except for the one thing and you know what the one thing is if you will just you know <laughs> because you, you got a one thing right now that you've been dancing around you'll like you'll get you'll do a whole lot of busy work you'll do you're like oh i, I need to go uh i need to go clean my house like you hadn't cleaned your house in two years and now all of a sudden you just really have to clean your house you didn't give a shit about cleaning your house you know a week ago but all of a sudden you commit to your destiny and i really need to clean my house i, I really need to go i need to go do it. like no you don't need to do nothing that you need to do the thing that you said you were going to do and just do that and everything else is going to be taken care of you face your goliath the whole army lays down amy and so but you are i i, I you're 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 taking on goliath you're you're going i'm seeing you doing it yeah go ahead amy what you got i'm just laughing so much because i literally <laughs> i did i started the awaken uh waken women group and one of my things was to clean my house and because i haven't done it for years and i finally got finally found someone that will come and help me clean my house and it's like i don't have time i'm trying to make this damn mastermind <laughs> So yeah. just kind of funny that you use that as an example. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you're like, you can use that as a stepping stone, like to, is to build right. your confidence in yourself. And like, cause you can set a goal. Hey, I'm gonna clean my house. Cause you know, maybe you're looking at Goliath, like I ain't ready for Goliath yet. So you can practice, you know, by, okay, I'm going to clean my house, but make yeah. sure that you, it, you're conscious and you're aware of that you're doing that. Like instead of, you know, heading for Goliath and then all of a sudden, you're letting it just distract you yeah. don't let it distract you if you're doing it do it consciously and don't you know don't take your eye off goliath and you set the date i'm gonna battle goliath on this day and you know yeah. what while i'm preparing for, for that day i'm gonna go clean my house because it's gonna build up you know it's gonna build up my integrity it's gonna build my belief in myself look i can accomplish things i can get something done. i can set a goal and then i can get it done so if i can clean my house after i had it for two years then i can defeat goliath because if i can do any if i can do this i can do that so it's, yeah. yeah, you can use that. It's a great thing to use that. Yeah, I that noticed that. I noticed that when the dog showed up that like, I really, really, really wanted it to be my distraction. Uh, and I really, when I first got it was like, I had all these plans and look, now I can't do any of them because I got to focus on that dog. And it was like, oh, uh -huh. that's funny because i was totally using him as a distraction and it was like he could actually be a tool yes yeah but, I got got, but when i first got him i was like oh no i can't do anything i can't take care of myself i just finished this beautiful nine-day cleanse i was getting my body moving i was doing my things and then i got the dog and everything like that went out the window and it was like, wait a minute, if I don't do all that stuff, I can't take care of the dog. So, you know, it, it, it thankfully shifted back to like reality and what I really needed to do. But I used him for quite a while for a really good distraction. <laughs> yeah. So I couldn't clean my house because I had a new puppy. I couldn't do anything because I had a new puppy. <laughs> yeah. So as long as you're conscious and aware, you're what you were once distractions actually are tools are, you know, they're little weights that you can lift to build your momentum as you go yeah. do your thing. So, uh, cause yeah, you're cool. like, you're, cause you, that was per you, cause that dog wasn't a distraction. That dog was your Goliath. He was oh, showing yeah. you yourself. He was showing you your demons <laughs> and you're like, Oh, there they are. <laughs> he brought them to the surface. Oh right? Yeah. <laughs> You thought you it, did yeah, the work. in a big way. You thought you did the work when you went and did the little retreat. No, that ain't the work. That's that's <laughs> that got that right. got that lets you unclench your fist enough so that the it, the stuff could come to the surface. That's all yeah. you did. 
That yeah. wasn't the work. That was just yeah. relaxing enough so all your shit could come to the surface. And it showed up in the form of this little puppy dog, this pet personal emotional trainer. And now your demon, there it is. Oh, crap. I, I didn't know that was in there. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Well, I knew it was in there. I just didn't want to. I've been pushing it down forever. Yeah. So you relaxed enough so it came to the surface. So yeah. Yeah. Great Thank job, you. Amy. Yeah, you're doing awesome. So again, when you take that step that you're afraid to take, and you didn't even know how to take, that's when providence moves. That's, but you know, people are sitting around waiting on God when God's waiting on you, you got to take the step. And when you take the step, then that's when the reinforcements show up. But they're like, I'm not gonna, you know, nobody's, they, there's nothing to back you. Why, why is somebody gonna back you up if you're just sitting there? There's no backup. There's, it's just you just sitting there, little mini me. There's no need for any reinforcements. There's no need for any miracles if you're not stepping. So you step towards it and it steps towards you and the miracle occurs. What you don't know how to do, it, it, the miracle happens. You know how to sow the seed. You know how to water it. You don't know how to turn the acorn into the oak tree. Your job is the what and the why. You, you sow that seed, you water it, and then God handles the miracle. The how, you don't know how to turn the acorn into the oak tree. You don't know how to make the miracle. You just do your part and the miracle shows up. All of a sudden, boom, you got an oak tree. I don't know how that happened. Well, I know how it happened. You sowed a seed and you watered it and you kept watering it. You kept taking care of it. You kept taking the action. And then it was natural. So, uh, uh, and, but you got, you set the dates like, so a perfect example. So this morning we, uh, talked about together in our, in our group here at the village. So we, we moved into our village about I don't know, like a few, like three weeks ago or something. And we've been just really you're getting settled in you know, getting everything where it feels like us, you know, getting everything cleaned up and really nice. Um, and there's still a lot more work to do, but I'm like, Hey guys, when are we going to do an awaken live live? We got our village. So it's time to do an awaken live live in our village. Like the first awaken live live in the first earth waking village. Like let's, let's do it. You know, cause I'm, you know, build, building the, you know, the, just, just keep the flow going, keep, you know, the momentum going. Because if you start getting stagnant, then you get comfortable and your comfort becomes your cage. So just keep yourself growing, keep yourself moving. And how you do that is by setting dates, by committing to something. You can, so lack of commitment is the high cost of a low life. Set the commitment, set the date. I'm committed to this on this time. And it's, and it's you know, now we can life live. That's not like anything scary. I don't really know anything that's scary for me anymore. I can't remember the last time I, I found anything that's scary for me. I don't know what would you know, what step I would have to take that would be scary for me. I just, nothing really scares me anymore. Um, but so Awaken Life Live isn't anything that scares me or anything, but it's a great commitment that we say, boom. And so we talked about it at breakfast and then we all, we, we all agreed on the date. And then what did I do? I made a Facebook post. I said, Hey, everybody, we're doing it this date. And I started, you know, well, first, actually I went ahead and, you know, uh, created the, 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 my pages, my, you know, my, where people could register and I created the, you know, the, 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 the page where they can, you know, check out and everything. And all, I got all that done. That was the first thing I, w I moved into action immediately. Once we made the decision, I moved into action. And so there's uh, this is a Tony Robbins quote, never leave the site of a decision without taking some sort of action towards its attainment. Never leave the site of a decision without some sort of taking some sort of action towards its attainment. Cause remember, your thoughts lead to your emotions, lead to your actions, lead to your results. If there was no new action, there's no new result. And if there's no new action, it's because there's no new thought because the thought would lead to a new action. If, it was, if you sowed a new seed, if you sowed a new thought, that means you would move into a different emotion and you would take a new action that you had never taken before. If it was a new seed planted, there's gonna be a new action taken that you haven't taken before. So once you've made the decision, how you know you made the decision, is because you take the action because faith of that works is dead. If you don't do, if you don't back up your faith with works, you don't got no faith. It's bullshit. You're, you're, you're lying to yourself. You're bullshitting yourself. You don't have faith. The work shows the faith. The work works proves it. How do you know you got faith? Well, you know, you're by your fruit. Well, the first fruit is the action that you take. You're, did you, did you take the step? Did you sow the seed? Did you, did you do it? And so you've got to commit, commit yourself. And then once you commit yourself, you put it out there and then you got other people that, you know, as soon as I put it out there, I'm like, okay, cool. There it is. As soon as people start registering, I can't back out now because people are registered. It's now it's like, 
one thing is put it out there, but then, you know, people start registering. Okay, boom, it's done. And so now we've got, so it's May, March uh, 5th, 6th, and 7th is when we're doing our Awaken Life Live Live, like here in Costa Rica at the very, at the very first Awaken Life Live at the very first Earth Waking Village. And we're not really ready yet. We're not ready for that many people to show up. But you know what? By on March 5th, it might be that it might be at, you know, seven o'clock in the morning. The, the event starts at 8 a.m. It might be 7.59 a.m. before we're ready for that for that event, before everything is ready, prepared for that event. But at 8 a.m. on March 5th, we will be ready for that event. We'll everything that we will have all the space, we'll have the beds, we'll have everything prepared. We'll have, you know, it's all going to be, we'll have our our we're we're redoing our floor. Uh, Kirk started ripping out. There's a there's this huge bar that they had in like our main our main area, and Kirk just starts ripping that out today. And so we're gonna like that's got to be all ripped out. We're gonna redo the entire floors and then build a stage. It's all that all has to be done. And then all the beds, everything has to be done because we set the date. Now, um, if you because people don't do what they should do, they do what they must do. If you don't commit yourself, if you don't make the commitment and put it out there, you'll just take as long as you want. I mean, it's the, it's like you'll just remain comfortable. But everything that you want and don't have is on the other side of your comfort zone. So you have to do something that is not comfortable in order to get the thing that you don't, ha don't yet have. So put your ass on the line and commit to something and commit to it sooner than you think you need to. I mean, sooner than you think, like give yourself less time than you think that you need. So however much time that you think you need, do it in less time than that. So um, anybody interested? You guys coming? Anybody coming to Awaken Life Live, by the way? It's our first one at our first village here in Costa Rica. You guys, Amy, you come? I, oh, yeah. So the next thing I did, at first I made a post. The second thing I did is I started uh, messaging people that I would like to see here. I'm like, who would I really love? To, who would I love to see? at you know awaken live live and i just started like messaging people so do you do that you set up an event you're going to set up your master class set it up in less time than you think that you need if you think you need 30 90 days cut it in half 45 days however much time that you think that you need because you will get it done you once you put your ass on the line you'll be shocked at what you can actually pull off so cut it in half however much time you think you cut that thing in half and give yourself that time and then you know post it put it out there to the world and then just start messaging people hey i'm doing this thing i mean that's what i'm just telling you this is what i did today this is what i did today we made a decision this morning then i made the web page and then i posted it on facebook and then i started messaging people today the same day the decision was made so i'm not telling you this so to tell you how awesome and amazing i am i'm telling you this because this is where the fruit comes from. This is how I produce miracles. This is how I've birthed a movement. I'm telling you what to do. It, it's like, everybody's like, what's the secret? What's the, give me all the little tools. This is the secret. Do it. Just literally just do it. Commit yourself and put it out there and start inviting people. Start doing the uncomfortable things that you don't think that you're ready to do yet and just do it and you become ready. If you won't leap without wings, you're not qualified to fly. The wings grow on the way down because you didn't need wings when you're just sitting there. You don't have the wings because you don't need them. Once you leap, oh, cool, I need some wings right now. And when you need the wings, that's when they show up. The wings don't show up when you want wings. Wings show up when you need wings. So the things that you're waiting for, they're waiting on you. Uh, so anyway, I saw Amy. Amy's coming. Who else coming? Anybody coming? It's going to be miraculous. I pro what I can guarantee you is if you do show up, you, you will thank me. You'll be like, thank God I came to this event. That I, you, there will not be a single ounce of regret. If, if, you have any, if you have any ounce of regret, I will pay for your entire expense, everything that it costs you. If you come down here and then you're like, damn, that wasn't like miraculous. That, that wasn't like the greatest three days of my life. Literally, if you come down, you do this and you're like, that wasn't the greatest three days of my life. I will pay all of your expenses for everything it caught you. I will pay for your flight, everything. 
if you come down here and you taste and you and you hang out with this beautiful community in this beautiful village for these three days then that's what i do so who's coming who's coming i saw amy are you coming amy are you for real coming are you making well you cut you you put a little thing into it though what i, did. I committed last week to doing my master class on march 5th how well so i'm gonna have to have it all done and be in costa rica by that time so i'm gonna oh, even have to darn. change the date oh darn <laughs> darn gosh all right so well, i guess i can't remember so, now, I, so I, did something, I did something great because remember i said however much time you need cut it in half so i know <laughs> when cut it in half is now not march 5th anymore you need to you need to be done you know like in like next a, week yeah, yeah. <laughs> a couple of weeks that's over a month away so you can take you can take three i know you wanted four weeks but take three at least take a week off and you take at least take 25 percent off right okay that's a little it's a little more uncomfortable right. there, i'll work on cause, it because hey, i because i know that you can do this amy and you might be like well i can't you know i guess it. well you can't bullshit me because i was being really optimistic when i said march because my real answer that i my head answer was a year from now and i was like you know what i'm just throwing this out i'm gonna say march what the hell and then kirk just happened to say my dad's birthday and i'm like all right i trust that what the hell so mm -hmm. now i'm gonna do it even half that <laughs> i don't know we'll see <laughs> We might even I'm feeling this. This uh, this reminds me of a client I had. She uh, was uh, <laughs> opening, wanted to open up a, a Montessori school in a small town in Texas. And I was like, great, well, let me help you, you know, create a little plan, get some steps going so you can get that done. So I arranged to go to her house that day in Austin and you know, sit down with her. And I'm like, okay. So I start my mapping out a few ideas and I kind of sketch out a what looks to me like a reasonable plan not not particularly aggressive but you, know, you do this and you do this spend so much doing this and she'll be all ready to go she goes great well she goes good i i, I, I made i made i made a plan last night i said oh great what is it i said well i think i can get all this done in about a year and a half i said oh well i made a plan too what she goes oh well what was yours i said i'm thinking about three weeks <laughs> And with some conversation, right, she went with the three week version, started, started her school and is now very successful. Right. And, and initially it just was not in her reality, but it absolutely was in my reality. And I could show her like, hey, this, you can do this. Well, it's not going to be it's not about being perfect. It's about getting your school launched. It's about starting on your dream. And she started that, that sucker and, and it, it took off. So just thought, thought I'd toss that in there. Yeah. Part of me is thinking that like going and doing some breakthrough and that kind of stuff would pro you know like would be something that I would prioritize over doing a master class I mean that if I'm being honest about it um and but I don't know that that has to be the case and I'm open to seeing what I can do in that time and you know maybe maybe it'll both work I trust that it will you know, I trust it. I just don't know how, but I trust it. So, you know. Just, so, I, I, again, you don't have to like, you, mo most people are getting ready to get ready. Just, I'm telling you what, just fire. Just literally just fire. Just give it what you got. Just go out there and just share what you know. Hey, you know, here's just, just uh, like in the framework. All the framework is like all you get with your master class. If you, you can just use the thing. So, it's clarity, simplicity, beliefs, and um, and environment. So you can just come out with the clarity there and just say, "Hey, uh, clarity can just be all right, guys." Uh, so you've got rage issues or whatever. So share with me, or just write down an example of something you did where it felt like your rage overtook you, like it had you. You didn't have it. Okay, cool. Now write down a vision of what would you like to see happen in that scenario. And so now they see where they are and they see where they want to go. And there's a gap. Cool. So now they've got clarity. And then you just say, and so that's the first part of your masterclass. And then you say, okay, great. And then you'll just give them like, you know, 10 minutes or something to do that. And then, okay, great. Now the next step is simplicity. So you got this gap. We got to bridge this gap. 
And then you just give them like three steps, just three to five simple steps. So what are what are the three steps? If if I were to if I were if I were learning to have my rage rather than my rage having me, what would be the three steps? If I went from somebody who rage overtook me to someone who actually could, you know, master it, what would what would be the three steps I would need to take? Well, I think the first step is awareness. Just acknowledging that you're aware of it, acknowledging that that is a problem and that that is something that you want and are willing to do the work to try to change. Okay. Yeah. And actually that's, that's even two steps. One, acknowledge yeah. that you have the issue. The second one, make the commitment, just commit that you're going to do what it takes to, 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 to end this. And then what'd be the third? Now that you've acknowledged it, now you've committed, what would be a third thing that you would do? Um, for me, it's getting centered. Just get centered. I, I, or getting clarified, getting tools or clarity around what it means to get centered and how to do that. Yeah, there you go. And so one of the things is just forgive, just forgive myself. Like go clean up all the moments in the past that I've ever done this before. Just go back in those moments and just forgive me. I knew not what I did. I was lost. I was you know, overtaken. And I'm, and so one would be forgive myself. And then two, forgive other, when other people did it to us forgive them and that boom now you're clean now you've cleaned up the past now now the whole past is perfect and now you got this beautiful foundation and now you can move forward and then the third step so that so so that was all around simplicity you just broke it you chunked it down you that gap there's a bridge now and you could call that the uh rage relief the rage relief bridge okay so cool here's where you are with the, your rage here's what you'd like to see well i'm going to share with you the rage relief bridge or or the rage relief uh, formula actually the rage relief formula because that you know mine is the the awakening your desk so anyway so here's the here it is it's these three steps and you just break each step down first first hey acknowledgement just have them write down something hey i acknowledge that uh, i didn't have rage rage ha rage had me in the past i acknowledge it and and that it's an issue it's a problem it's caused problems in my life that i i no longer um you know it's no longer uh I, i've outgrown this so it's no longer serving me Okay, cool. The second, make the commitment. So then you can just write it out. I, I now commit this day and they make the commitment and why, and, and they can say why I'm making this commitment. This is why it means so much to me. So I can always look back at this and I'm going to remember this moment, how much it means to me and really dive in there. Why? And then the third thing, now I'm going to go, the th next step is we're going to go and clean up all these times where I've beaten myself up for beating other people up and understand that, you know, I just, I was, you know, I was like a little little kid with a gun that didn't know what he was doing. And so forgive myself and then go and then start forgiving, do the work to forgive other people. And then the, the third, so that was clarity, then simplicity. And then the next thing is uh, uh, beliefs and say, hey, you, uh, you can do a, re the, a resistance release, but you can also give, hey, the beliefs go to Awaken Life Live. Here's a free gift. I'm giving you this free gift. Just go to this event, Awaken Life Live. And then you share your, your link for Awaken Life Live. And then, uh, and then the fourth thing is environment. So you want to make sure you're surrounded by, with people who share a common future. How would you like to be supported in this? And so you're not alone in trying to deal with your wage. You'd like to have a support system. Well, great. There's a whole group of people here that have come together to get to hold each other, you know, to, to, to care about each other, really, you know, deal with this together so you don't feel alone. And it's my, uh, the, the rage relief mastermind or, or whatever you, your thing is. Come join it. Boom. And there you go. That's your whole class. It's done right there. Cool. Um, I have one question in that, Jonathan. Okay. And I, I'm aware of the time. So can, you, so can you see that it's done? Did you yeah. see? And you yeah. can go back and watch this video and you, yeah. you got the I, whole yep. thing right there. And yeah. so you don't, I, so I could actually yeah. teach your class. I could teach your class tomorrow night. I could set yeah. it up tomorrow. And I yeah. could do that. Your rage master class. And yeah. I would. I you could clarified do it, it really well for me. Um, one question that is like something that I'm not sure the transition part of it. When I'm saying um, one thing that you could do is go to the Awaken Life Live. Do I need? How do I give the background of that? Just share your story. Transition into it. Oh, okay. Like, do I need to use that slide that has you, you in don't it? Need, that you don't says, even need any slides. And okay. If you, yeah, you don't need any, any, like that's just do what I just shared with you. Like okay. literally I could go there tomorrow, no slides, no nothing. And I could do your masterclass. And I so could fun. do it in an hour instead of a two yeah. hour thing, right? Yeah, do it in an hour. You can do it in 45 okay. minutes. Okay. 
yeah, just do it. Just do something and you're going to watch yeah. it grow. You're going to watch it expand and it's just going to be beautiful. Awesome. So, I can see that. Thank you. You got this, Amy. You, Amy, 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 say, I got this. I got this. All right. I believe you. <laughs> do you believe me? I, I, I know that you have this, Amy. Do you believe me? Yeah, I do. You know, I'm not bullshitting. I'm not a bullshitter. Have you, yeah. you probably noticed that, that I'm bullshit. Yeah. You got this. Kirk is, but not you. <laughs> yeah, Kirk's a bullshitter. Yeah. Yeah. He'll make, he just likes to make people feel good about themselves. I yeah. just, I just come in and ream them. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, great job. Uh, so anyway, uh, so Amy's coming. You, are you coming for real? Are you really going to come down to it? I'm looking into flights and I'm making a plan with Christy to see if I can, I think it would be easier for me to be able to meet someone at the airport and go from there with them where I've never been to Costa Rica and um, I'm not really comfortable traveling okay, there well, by myself yet. Right, but. Okay, that's that's okay. And it's just easy peasy. You just uh, get a, a, ta a cab and say, hey, I'm going to this place and it's done. You know, that yeah. and, and if you want to have somebody, that's that's fine too. Just whatever you got to do. So, okay, cool. Yep. Uh, Ariel said he is coming. If he's going to get his passport tomorrow, as long as he's got his passport, he's going to be here. So, boom, that's two. Who else is coming? Anybody else? Is there a place to stay outside of the village that's right nearby? You're going to stay at the village. Right. It, I would, but my, if, say, my, like my niece might want to come and she doesn't want to do Airbnb. anything like this. Is there a place right nearby? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's places. Airbnb. Yeah, just Airbnb it. You, okay. you can find something. All right, cool. Well, uh, and if anybody's watching this uh, on the recording, uh, you can go to awakenedlifelive.com forward slash Costa Rica. We got very limited seating. Um, so yeah, that's right. make sure you uh, secure that spot. If you're in, if your heart's calling on you, just, you know, don't let your, don't let your head block your heart. Let that thing pull you forward. And uh, um, I promise you, you know, that's the best, that's the best guarantee I can give it to everybody because I'm certain, you know, I can tell you that for absolute certain you, those three days, you will say, wow, this was, it's, this is one of the, the greatest three days of my life. It, it's, it, it will be in the top, definitely in the top five greatest weekends of your life. You will look back. That's my guarantee to you. If you come down there at the end of it, you will say that, wow, that was, uh, you know, that was in my top five greatest weekends of my life. And if not, then I will pay your entire thing. So that's how certain I am. All right. Well, cool. Uh, that is our time for this evening. I love you guys. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Um, thank you for doing the work, taking the steps, uh, committing yourself, and um, for uh, being the change that we wish to see that this world so desperately needs in this moment. We will see y'all next week. Love you, Love guys. you too, John. You guys All have right. a great evening. Daniel, Danielle, I, I messaged you earlier. Are you coming? You come, Danielle, you coming to Costa Rica? I really got to go get a passport and uh, yeah, okay. and then look at exactly when that is. All right. All right. Yeah. I'd love to it. Noelle, are you going? I'm going to Michigan to see my new grandbaby. That's the same same week that I'm oh, supposed to be out there. Sweet. It's my birthday on the 6th, so look at that. better way to party. Yeah, <laughs> happy rebirth. Because I, yeah, that's when we have rebirth days on I think day two. You will. That's when we make the shift from about halfway through day two. We go from death day to birthday, and boom, that'll be perfect. Okay. All right. <laughs> you get yes. You were gonna say something, Kirk? Nope. Nope. That's it. All right. Love you all. Bye, Dolce. Bye guys. See y'all soon. Bianca's already down here. Bianca's going to be here. She's already down here. We had two new people show up today. Uh, Reed and Grayson, they're here today because we got a, a wholeness retreat coming up uh, this uh, starting tomorrow. So we're preparing for that. So, you know, there's a handful of people already down here that are, they're, you know, going to be staying until Awaken Life Live. So it's going to be awesome. super cool. All right. We'll see y'all soon. Love you guys.